Hey guys, Squatch Reloading here. Today, we're gonna finish up two dies in our nine millimeter load series on our Dillon 550C here. The first die we're gonna work with is the Dillon seating die, and then we're gonna set the Dillon crimp die. Now in the Dillon die sets, we do the bullet seating and crimping in two operations, which is probably my preference. Um, the other thing with the Dillon seating die, it is a typical coarse thread um, die, and the, the struggle with this is that you have those coarse threads, so making small adjustments on your seating depth is a little bit more difficult, but it, it can totally be done. So we're gonna get into some details on the seating die here in a minute that I wanna show you. Um, things that we're gonna need today is we need a way to measure our case overall length. So we need a good set of calipers, digital, dial, vernier, whatever you have. Um, we're gonna use a Dillon nine millimeter case gauge. I have a couple cases here that I used during our bell setup on our powder measure. So I kept those because we're gonna use these to set our seating depth. And the reason being is there's no sense as we're making adjustments to have powder filled cases. So I just kept these and we'll use these as we continue around uh, the tool head here. We're also gonna need again, um, our projectiles from Hornady. So we'll need that. And we're also going to use a bullet puller. And we'll get into that in a minute, but uh, I'm gonna show you a quick way I make sure my crimp is not too excessive. So that's what we're gonna be using today. So let's get into setting these dies up. So there's, there's an interesting aspect of this uh, seating die from Dylan. Um, it is, uh, comes apart in several pieces. There's a retaining clip on the top of the die. And if we remove that, we actually have the seating uh, portion itself. And within the seating body, there is another pin and a dual purpose seating stem. One side is for a uh, round nose project projectile, as you can see there. And the other side is for your flat nose or your jacketed hollow points projectiles. So this is the end that we want to do our seating with today. So to make sure that we have that installed correctly, our, our die body here has a small hole and a large hole. And if you look at our pin, it has two corresponding diameters. So in the same way with your actual seating stem itself. So it can only go together one way. So we wanna make sure that we have our correct uh, seating style. In this case, it's gonna be the flat nose. We're going to drop it in our die body. And it's kind of tedious, but um, it goes right in there. You wanna make sure that you have both the larger diameters lined up, and then we're just dropping that one-way pin in until it slides freely. Now we'll go ahead and install that back into the seating die, and then we'll put the reclaining, or I'm sorry, retaining clip back into place. So now this die is set up to seat the flat nose or hollow point projectile. So now that we have our die set for the type of projectile we're gonna use, we're going to install the die into station three in our tool head. Just gonna get a couple threads going here. And now I'm also gonna take one of the cases that we previously belled in our last video. I'm going to set it into station three. And I went ahead and removed the retainer button just so I can just work in this station without indexing the shell plate. Now we're gonna take one of our 124 grain Hornady XTPs. We're gonna place it into the cartridge as we're gonna seat it. And then we're gonna raise our ram up. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to keep threading the die down in station three until we get contact onto the projectile. Now, according to our load data, our case overall length that we're going for is 1.06. So as I've threaded this die down, I can feel I've made contact with the projectile. So I'm gonna go ahead and back my ram out just a little bit because I know we've got a long ways to go. 
So I'm gonna give this a few turns and go ahead and, and insert the projectile into the, the cartridge. So now I'm gonna pull it out and I'm just gonna get a baseline reading of where we're at. And we're currently at 1.18. So we have got quite a ways to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this several turns and you guys, you can, this is all uh, based off experience and doing this. Um, you really, as long as you're measuring, you're not gonna get out of whack. You may over insert it a couple times and then have to start over, pull a bullet, whatever. But it's basically just trial and error and measuring. So right now, after several turns, we're sitting at 1.089. So we are very close. Now keep in mind with this die and the coarse threads, um, a little bit of turning the die is going to move quite a bit. And that's probably why I, I prefer the micrometer adjusted seating dies. Um, RCBS makes a good one. Uh, Redding. Redding's probably my favorite, but uh, these work great once you get them set up. So now what we're going to do is just make a small turn. I felt the projectile move. We're going to see where we're, we're at right now. Uh, we're at 1.07. So, and I barely turned that maybe a quarter. So I'm going to go another quarter and you can feel the projectile move um, when you pull the ram. Okay, so at 1.069, we are so close here. Let's see where we're at. And again, this is just trial and error. Keep going. We're at 106.5, slight turn. And we are now 1062. So I'm going to try to get that last little bit there to get us right on the money. Okay, so 1.060, and that is exactly where we want to go. Now to, to finish buttoning, buttoning up this die, we need to put our finished or our, our uh, projectile in the cartridge back into the die. And the reason being is that's putting some pressure on the die stem so that we can tighten this down without losing our adjustment. So we're just going to give it a little bit of turn there. Um, you don't have to go crazy on these lock rings, um, but always get into the habit as you're running, just checking them by hand because when they back out, you, you will know it. So we are done with this seating of the bullet and we now have our case length 1.06, 105.95. So we are on the money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another projectile and I'm going to run this other case that I have and see how consistent we are. And once they're set, typically it's it's very consistent. So 105.95. So we're not going to chase that ten, five ten thousandths. Um, we're just going to go with it, and that's that's exactly where we want to be. So now we're going to move on to setting the crimp. So now we're going to get into the crimp die, and this is probably one of the most confusing aspects uh, to a new reloader because there is no finite measurement per se. Um, it's to me, it's kind of you get you get a feel for it. Um, I'm going to show you a little trick that I do just to make sure I'm not getting excessive crimp. Um, excessive crimp can cause a multitude of issues. Uh, one being you can overpressure the case, um, especially if you're running at the top end uh, of your load data. Those are things that you want to avoid. The other thing that um, can happen is an excessive crimp will dig into the coating or the jacketing and that can expose lead when it's fired through your barrel and you'll get lead fouling. So less is more when it comes to crimp. Um, a lot of guys don't even don't even crimp their cartridges. 
And the only reason that I, I particularly crimp is I all of my nine millimeters especially are all auto loading. So that uh, taking that crimp um, gives you a little bit more glide on your feed ramp. And um, so that's, that's what I'm shooting for. And I'm gonna show you again uh, a little trick that I do just to make sure I'm not getting carried away. But uh, the die setup's pretty straightforward. So let's jump into that and then we'll get into checking and making sure we don't have too much crimp. So our crimp die is gonna go into station four on our tool head here. Again, we're gonna put it in a couple threads just to make sure that we have, have the uh, die squared up into the tool head. I'm going to remove our locator tab into station four so I can put this cartridge um, in and out several times if need be. But we're gonna take one of our, our cartridges that we produced, we made two. I'm hoping I can get this done in one, but you never know, it's reloading, things happen. So we're gonna put the cartridge in station four. We're going to raise our ram up and we're going to tighten this die down and we will feel the crimp or the crimp aspect of the die engage the cartridge. So we're going to keep turning this down. Until we feel some contact. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of contact there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back it out and I'm just going to go a quarter turn. And then I'm going to check, and this is all by feel, and um, so you guys can see where we're at. That was a quarter turn once we made contact, and I have still got quite a bit of bell to overcome. So we're just going to keep making small adjustments. Again, when it comes to crimp, less is definitely more. Um, you, you will barely feel any engagement. Um, when you do this because it, it's uh, such a small degree of, of metal forming that we're doing so we're just going to keep making small adjustments and checking by feel so we should feel a smooth transition from the case mouth to the projectile and you know you can make start making some big moves on this I, I wouldn't suggest it. Again, less is more. So I, this is my method. Small adjustments until I feel it start to smooth out. Because this is a taper crimp, it's going to take a little bit of dive movement before we really start engaging the cartridge and getting it to, to start to fold over there. Okay, so that is uh, pretty smooth and I'll pull this out and show it to you. Okay guys, so here's the crimp as it'll look uh, once it's, it's done, but you will not be able to really visualize this. Um, so the best way to do it is it's all by feel. And what you're feeling for is that there's no uh, definite bell still or rough edges. It should be not smooth, but a good transition down, down to the projectile. A good way to get the feel for this is check your factory ammo and you'll kind of develop how that feels on your fingers. But uh, to button up the die, just like we did with the seating die, we are going to run the projectile back up into the die and we're going to tighten our lock ring and again the reason why we go back up into the die with the cartridge and projectile is so that we don't get any additional movement and we keep the setting that we're happy with so now i'm going to take this projectile out with our bullet puller and then i'm going to show you how i visualize my die set up and how that crimp affects the projectile. Okay, so now I have my projectile out of the cartridge that we just produced and I'm hoping that you guys can see this. I spin it around there and all I'm looking for is a witness mark and not I'm not looking to create a crease in the projectile, just a witness mark which is going to be right about here 
And once I see a witness mark, that's all the harder that I'm looking to set that crimp. So that's how I've been setting my crimps up and I haven't had any issues. So, so again, there's not a real good measurement per se to get with calipers to confirm that your crimp is um, measurable or in, in a specification. Um, if you look at your SAMI specs, you, you'll see a tapered edge and it may call uh, 379 or 380 um, as far as the diameter on your case mouth. Um, we're going to check all those measurements again against our specification, but as far as the crimp goes, there's ways to calculate that out based off wall thickness of your cartridge and all that, but we're dealing with, with range brass, so we're going to see variation all over the place. So again, that's why I always say less is more when it comes to the crimp, and I'm just looking for that slight witness mark that I just showed you. So let's uh, finish these this last cartridge up, we'll measure it up against our SAMI, or our SAMI spec and, and see how it looks. So in all of your load manuals, you're gonna get a pictorial or a drawing of your case dimensions. This one is out of the Sierra book and it's probably one of my favorites because I can just pull this sheet out. Um, but so let's get measuring our produced cartridge against our drawing. Okay, so if we're looking at the base of our case, the uh, specification is 391, and we are right at 390. So that's uh, right there where we want to be on our case mouth. Oops. We are right at 380. So we're good there. Now, the uh, specification for overall length is 1.169. We know that we were shooting for 1.06, and we are right, right there we want to be. So as far as dimensionally, we are right, right there. So now I'm going to take my case gauge, and we're just going to make sure that it falls in freely and that we are flush across the top and then it should fall right out. So we have a cartridge that's within, is dimensionally within specification. It is within the case gauge or chamber gauge. So we are ready to start running this press. Hey guys, so we're wrapping up this video today and what we've accomplished is we have a completed cartridge profile. There's no powder in this, but with that being said, we're ready to start running some rounds off this uh, progressive here. So to kind of summarize where we're at, we have went through the entire process of setting up the caliber conversion, the tool head, the uh, sizing and decapping die, the powder measure with the belt or pre-flare, We've also got our seating die set and our crimp die. So really all that's left is getting primers in this machine. We're going to go back, double check our powder measure one more time, and then we're ready to start cranking out rounds. I have two boxes of projectiles we're going to run through, and then uh, we're going to be wrapping up this video series here pretty soon. So until next time, come on over to Facebook at Ohio Reloading Connection. Also, like and uh, subscribe to Squatch Reloading over on Facebook. We, we have all of these videos on Utah Gun Exchange and Gun Streamer, so check those two sites out. And then of course here on YouTube. So until next time, God bless.